Hello and good evening. Tonight's video tutorial is going to be another uh, Juno S tutorial. And the first one that we did was how to recover from a uh, root password that you might not have and how to make that recovery happen on the switch so that you can take back control of your switch. And so this second uh, Juniper Juno S tutorial is going to be on performing an upgrade. So as you can see, uh, the Juno S switch that I have here is running Juno S version 11.4 R 1.6. And so we're going to be performing an upgrade and we're going to upgrade this switch to 11.4 R 4.4. And again, uh, the 11.x branch of code is probably not recommended today. Um, obviously 12.3 R 6.6 is the TAC recommended version and we had looked at that the other day and so what has happened here is I rebooted the switch and I went ahead and I logged in but this is really the key thing to take a look at right here so the first uh, upgrade that we're gonna do and I'm gonna do uh, several upgrades here I'm gonna do one with the uh, how to upgrade the Juno S installation with a USB stick and then I'm also going to do how to install the Juno S on an EX series switch via the CLI but using an FTP server. So I'm going to actually demonstrate both of these upgrade methods and it's uh, unfortunate that uh, I'm no longer with the company. A couple years ago I was on a, a contract where we had uh, a pretty nice virtual chassis set up with a bunch of EX 4200s and uh, was never able to capture the upgrade process as it looks on a virtual chassis because as you can see here uh, the install steps talk about using the command line prompt but they talk about a standalone device an 8200 series and we also had two 8200 series and then just the virtual chassis right which would be the uh, the 4200s the 3200s which I have you cannot do virtual chassis setups with the 3200s so Unfortunately, I will not be able to demonstrate the virtual chassis, but we're going to be doing it for a standalone system. So let's go ahead and jump in. And again, uh, it's key to note here that this is the output that I received when I inserted the USB stick into the rear of the EX3200 chassis, showing me that the device has been mounted. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and jump in here and make this upgrade happen. So the first step, it says mount, oh, and a quick note. So I did literally grab an old four gig memory stick and I did format it as a uh, FAT32. And my previous uh, experience has indicated that if you do do NTFS or, um, oh, I'm trying to remember the other, there was another um, file system format that I did run into some issues so I, I've always learned to stick with the FAT32 as Juniper has recommended. Alright so let's type in whoops uh, mount and actually looks like we need to be logged in as root here so let's jump in here as root and it's gonna be J-U-N-I-P-E-R-1-2-3 alright so we'll type in CLI and we'll get this output out of the way here so we've got the CLI command, so if I type mount, and actually I need to be up one level, I apologize, there we go. All right, so if I type in mount and uh, ms dos fs, and so we're gonna do slash dev slash da1s1, and now I'm doubting if that was what my file system mine was da1 as you can see here it kind of got overwritten so we'll stick with da1s1 see what happens and I'll say to slash mnt so I've just mounted the USB stick that was inserted into the 3200 chassis on the file system slash mnt so if I do an ls slash mnt sure enough there you can see my J install 11.4 R 
image. All right, so what we're gonna do now is for a standalone device, it says, go ahead and type CLI, and then request system software add slash MNT slash, and here's where being able to cut and paste comes in extremely handy. Our J install file name that's gonna have the Juno S operating system ready to go, and then hit enter. And what's happening now is it's going to go ahead and it's going to copy that file or that uh, that file that is on the USB stick is now going to be copied over and prepared for install. And so we'll give this a couple seconds here. And again, you can see that if you're using the 8200 series or the virtual chassis, that you need to make sure that you take into account that there could be a routing engine ID. And on the virtual chassis setup, you would be looking at the member ID. And there is a way with the virtual chassis to get it to push down to all of the virtual chassis members. Okay, so we've got a notice that says validating configuration against incoming package.tgz. Use the no validate option to skip this if desired. So a reboot is required to install the software. Use the request system reboot command immediately. And so if we come back up here, we can see request system reboot is the next step. So let's go ahead and type in request system reboot. So reboot the system and we'll say yes. So the system is now going to go down and we're on the console so we're actually going to see the messages and the installation take place. So this is going to be the first of uh, at least two upgrade videos. The next upgrade that I'm going to do, which I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, cut the video at the end of the USB install once we've validated that uh, the, it's been upgraded to 11.4 R 4.4. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, make that one video as a USB install and then I'm going to make another video. Um, we're going to upgrade. We're jumping to 12.3 and I'm going to be doing that via FTP. All right, so here we go. We've got the reboot process taking place. You'll see quite a few messages that are going to come up. And as you can see now, it says installing disk zero slice three slash incoming dash package dot TGZ. And so here is where we just verified our J install, right? So this is the file that we're using to upgrade this switch. And so that's been verified, signed by package production. So this is validated that the file that we're using is in fact a legitimate Juno S operating system tar file that's been gzipped up. And we should see here in a second that it's going to be installing a number of different packages for us. We're going to let this continue to run. And if I remember correctly, this takes about two to three minutes, but it shouldn't run much longer than that. And for those of you wondering how this is maybe different or might be uh, similar to a Cisco upgrade, it's very similar to a Cisco upgrade. The Cisco upgrade, you use a bin file, and the bin file on the Cisco side, that file is actually 
um, a compressed version of the operating system. If you do any GNS3 work uh, or work within GNS3, you'll definitely be aware of the fact that it will actually ask you if you would like to uncompress the .bin file uh, to work with it. So very similar to the tarred and gzipped file here that Juniper has, the Cisco bin file is also compressed and obviously the reason for that is to save space. So, and here you can see it's checking the package, in package integrity. And again, we're doing our upgrade here to 11.4 11 R4.4, which is an upgrade from the version that we were on. And so the, the process on the Cisco side is also very similar, where you get your bin file into the flash directory and you can simply remove all other bin files that are there, all other Cisco IOSs, and then reload. Or there's a boot system uh, environment variable that you can set and actually point to that image. So, and this looks like it's going along fantastic here. So it's adding the kernel, the crypto, the docs, and all of the necessary packages to get us up and running here. And there's our web interface being installed, the package for the web interface. All right, so now it's going to reboot to complete the installation. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and pause, and we're going to jump right back in uh, as soon as the reboot completes. So we'll be right back. Okay, so we are back, and the reload of the switch is completed. So let's go ahead and get logged in. I created a username earlier. We're going to be going over all of that but I just wanted to get something on this switch here other than the root account so I'm gonna go ahead and type in my password alright and as you can see we received the message here that says Juno S 11.4 R4.4 if I do a show config we're gonna see the same thing and so there you go the version is 11.4 R4.4 and so this is how you use a USB stick, obviously copying the image over to that FAT32 formatted USB stick, inserting the USB stick into the EX uh, series chassis, uh, where it will then be mounted up, and then you simply follow these steps. It's very quick, uh, very easy to, to follow along here, very simple and very straightforward. All right, so this has been a Juno S installation slash upgrade uh, with a Juno S software package on a USB stick. Uh, my next video will show you how to do it. We're going to upgrade to 12.3 R66, I believe, or maybe R77. I have to double check. But the next video is going to show how to do it uh, from an FTP server. All right. Hopefully this helps you out, and have a great evening.